In this video, we'll go over 10 types of mounts that have special abilities, in addition to their normal run speed increases. And at number 10, we'll start off with the underwater mounts. These mounts are useful in the rare situations in which you need to swim underwater for something, which does come up every now and then, and underwater mounts will give you 135% movement speed while underwater. Without any speed modifiers, you move at 67% movement speed while swimming. So, underwater mounts will only make you move 35% faster than normal running, which is absolutely worth using if you need to move anywhere underwater. And for comparison, a druid seal form is also 135% movement speed, and the artifact fishing pole, which turns you into a shark instantly, gives you 169% movement speed, making the artifact fishing pole the fastest way to navigate underwater. Outside of Vashir, of course, where there is a zone-specific mount that allows you to move at 371% movement speed while underwater. Now, since faster movement speed underwater isn't the most useful thing in the world, there aren't too many underwater mounts. So here's a quick list of all of the available underwater mounts. Just a note, most underwater mounts have something to do with fishing, either fish directly or obtained through fishing. And there's very few exceptions to this. And at number nine, we have the sea turtles. These two mounts are also technically underwater mounts, but what sets them apart from purely underwater mounts is that you can use these mounts on land as well. Although with this small little restriction that they do not increase your movement speed on land. They give you the swim speed increase to 135% while underwater, and then when you get on land, you just have normal, unmounted, 100% movement speed. But it doesn't dismount you, like the underwater mounts do when you leave the water. What this means is that with the turtle mounts, you can swim to the surface of the water without being dismounted, or jump down waterfalls or other bodies of water where you have to leave the water occasionally without having to remount each time. Originally, the Riding Turtle was only available through a Warcraft TCG code, but they added it to the loot table of Murlocs and the fishing hut of the garrison, adding an alternative, in-game way of obtaining the mount. And the blue version of the Sea Turtle could be obtained by simply fishing in Northrend. One more thing to note about the Sea Turtles, you can mount on them at level 1, making them one of the few mounts usable before level 20. Although I'm pretty sure that's just the case for all underwater mounts. And at number 8, we have the multi-person mounts. These mounts allow one or two extra people to hop on your mounts and allow you to jump off cliffs and kill them, or used to fly low-level players who don't have flying yet to places, and any other multiple uses in which carrying someone around might be useful. Now, let's go over a few of the multi-person mounts. First, we have the two-person flying mounts. There is the X-53 Touring Rocket and the Obsidian Nightwing, obtained as choices through Recruit a Friend the 2017 BlizzCon Virtual Ticket Mounts, of which Horde and Alliance got their own respective airships, and then the most common one being the Sandstone Drake, which is crafted by Alchemists and sold on the Auction House. Next up we have the two-person ground mounts, of which it's basically just the motorcycles, one for each faction, crafted by engineers using Northrend materials. I remember back in Cataclysm, when Goblins first came out as a playable race, they got a discount for the motorcycle parts you bought from a vendor, whereas no one else got a discount because there was no reputation associated with that vendor. So it was a very lucrative mount to sell if you had a goblin race engineer. And then we have the three person mounts, which include the Grand Black War Mammoth, which is a drop from bosses in VOA, and the Grand Ice Mammoth, which is purchased with gold from Sons of Hodir Rep in Northrend. Now, you may have noticed a few multi-person mounts missing from this spot, and that's because they will be coming up in a little bit because they also do something else. And at number 7, we have the Hive Mind. This is a unique mount in that it's the only mount in the game with a special ability to hold 5 people, and they can go faster than other mounts based on the amount of people riding inside of it. And to top it all off, it's also a flying mount that allows passengers inside to urban mine without having to dismount from it. Now, this mount might seem like the best mount in the game if it's able to do all of these things, hold the five people, potentially go faster than all other mounts, and allow your passengers to urban mine, but there is a catch to this. See, the mount has two parts to it for actually obtaining it that go into its restrictions. First is to collect four monocles, 
one per person, with a fifth person getting a free pass. Then, after that, they must gather in Surumar, mess with some Withered, and then enter the Court of Stars and spend about half an hour in there solving puzzles. At that point, you will be awarded the mount, but you also become attuned to each other, meaning those five people can only ride each other's hive minds. Which means you can't just have any five people in your party ride with you. Literally only the people you completed the attunement with can hop into your hive mind. But you can attune new people to it, you just need to run that last part of the puzzle all over again with the four other people you want to attune to your mount. So unless you hang out with those four other friends all the time, it would be rare for you to get the maximum use out of this mount very often. And at number six, we have the Traveler's Tundra Mammoth. Now, this is a three-person mount, just like the ones from the number eight spot on this list. The difference with this one is that it has two NPCs already in the side passenger compartments. One of the NPCs is a basic vendor who sold crafting items, food, water, selective reagents, and ammo before they removed those two things from the game. And the other one could repair your gear and sell different types of crafting reagents, allowing you to buy basic things without having to run to town, as well as repairing without having to visit a repair vendor, or relying on an engineer to have a scrap bot or jeeps. These two NPCs can also be kicked off at any moment to allow space for other people to hop on, and turn it into a normal multi-person mount. With a price tag of 20,000 gold, it's not too difficult to obtain today, as you can just go to the mount vendor and either dollar in and purchase it. But when this mount was first added to the game at the start of Wrath of the Lich King, this 20,000 gold price was actually quite high, and was basically their gold sink for that expansion, which could be reduced to 16,000 gold with Exalted Kirin Tor Rep. This should go to show you how much gold has inflated, where a 20,000 gold mount was considered something you'd save up for for a while and that not many people had, as those two vendors were a brand new thing to the game, and the reagent vendor was incredibly useful. Even in Cataclysm, when they started removing reagents from spells, they added dust to it instead, which allowed you to change out your glyphs. So it was still pretty useful. And at number 5, we have the Grand Expedition Yak. This mount was added in Mist of Pandaria, and had two people riding it just like the Traveler's Tundra Mammoth, except it had a reforger on it in addition to the repair vendor. Reforging was a thing that only existed for two expansions, that allowed you to convert 40% of one of your secondary stats on your gear into any other secondary stat you wanted. And with things like hit and expertise still in the game, reforging your gear to hit the perfect cap was all but necessary for endgame content, as any stats above the hit cap were wasted. So there were add-ons in the game that reforge all of your gear to give you the perfect hit chance, and then reforge everything else into whatever your second best secondary stat was. It was incredibly complicated to reforge your gear into hit on your own without an add-on. And because of this, every time you got a new piece of gear, you had to run back to town, go to the reforger, and then reforge all of your gear to hit that magical hit cap number again. So having a mount with a reforger on it was almost necessary in any raid group. Everyone had at least one person with a reforge jack in their group, with some raids even pulling together to buy the mount for the raid leader, just so they'd have a reforger during raids. As this mount was also the gold sink of that expansion, as it cost 120,000 gold to buy, which is still a pretty steep price. Kind of. I know a lot of people who don't own this yak even today. During the very next expansion in Warlords of Draenor, Blizzard removed reforging from the game, and with removing reforging, they got rid of the reforge NPC on this mount, and instead replaced it with the transmogrifier NPC, because transmog was added in Mist of Pandaria. So with the mount being converted into a transmog mount, it was no longer necessary for raiding, but lots of people liked this change anyway, as transmog was a very popular addition to the game. The repair NPC on this mount also sells a few updated things that aren't on the Traveler's Tundra Mammoth, including enchanting vellums, which I use for my enchanting profession. So it's a really useful mount for me. And at number four, we have the mighty Caravan Brutasaur. Just like with the Traveler's Tundra Mammoth and the Grand Expedition Yak, this mount was added as a gold sink for BFA and costs a whopping 5 million gold to purchase, making it by far the most expensive mount in the game, with the next most expensive mount being 2 million gold. 
which also makes it the most expensive item in the game to purchase. That makes this mount, with the current gold prices based on North American WoW tokens, cost almost $1,000 to purchase. Now, what makes this mount unique over the others is that instead of a transmogrifier, it holds an auction house NPC on its back, allowing for players to buy or sell stuff from the auction house anywhere, instead of just in major cities. Auction house NPCs are one of the few city NPCs that Blizzard held out on making convenient for the longest time, as they don't even add new auctioneers to new expansions major cities, and you had to be an engineer to use special auction houses in those cities. So for them to add one to a mount means they would have had to charge a buttload of money for it, which they do. You can also kick off the two vendors on this mount in order to turn it into a multi-person mount, just like with the Mammoth or the Yak. Seeing as the other two gold sink mounts are nowhere near as difficult to buy today as they were when they first came out, that makes you wonder if in two expansions from now, 5 million gold might be seen as an easy one-time expense like 20k gold is today. Because I personally sold battle pets in BFA for more gold than what the Yak is worth. And at number 3, we have the two heirloom mounts. The Alliance Chauffeured Mecha Engineer's Chopper and the Horde Chauffeured Mecha Hawk. These two mounts have the special ability of being usable at level 1 with no riding skill and unlike the turtles, actually increase your movement speed by 60% which is the exact same movement speed increase as the mounts you get at level 20. So with these mounts, you basically have a normal mount for the first 20 levels. As long as you don't mind only being able to use this one mount though. I say two mounts, but they're actually just faction specific. One for Horde and one for the Alliance. The way to obtain this mount is from the achievement you get for collecting 35 heirlooms. Which is appropriate since this is a mount you use for brand new characters, and heirlooms are used for brand new characters, they go hand in hand. And the mount is also unique in how you ride it. Basically, you're driven around by a rather fancy dressed human or orc, with the orc even wearing a nice top hat. Although, even though you aren't in the driver's seat, you do still control the mount. And because of this unique distinction, this mount has another special ability, in that it's the only mount in the game which doesn't dismount your character if you're dazed from behind. So some people will use this mount if they want to run through packs of mobs, or even for island expeditions if they want to gather up a whole bunch of mobs for a big AoE pool, even though it's slower than the 100% ground speed mounts because of its special ability. Making the heirloom mount one of the most useful mounts in the game, but not the most useful as we still have two other mounts on this list. Number 2, the Sky Golem mounts. These are two flying mounts that have the unique special effect of allowing you to gather herbs without dismounting. The Sky Golem is crafted with engineering, requiring 30 days of crafting cooldowns in order to make it with your engineer, or you can just buy one off the auction house since they are sellable. But there's also the mechanized lumber extractor, which is a mount awarded with getting the collect 300 toys achievement. They both look basically the same, and they both have the herbing special ability. Being able to gather without having to dismount saves a lot of time, and allows you to gather more herbs in the same amount of time, making it almost a necessary part of any herb collector that's not a druid. As druids can herb while on their travel form, which goes just as fast as mounts, so they don't need this mount. But for all other classes, this mount is amazing for those large herb gathering binges you do while watching Netflix or something. And at number one, we have the Water Strider Duo. The Water Striders allow you to walk over water as long as you're not in combat, making this the most useful ground mount in the game, seeing as just how much water and small pools there are around Xandalar and Kul'Turas. Same with the Broken Isles. There's just small pools of water everywhere. The mounts are also low in stature, so they don't have to worry about getting stuck in houses or under low hanging overpasses. So the mounts are an incredibly convenient size, and have this incredibly convenient special ability. The Water Strider mounts are so useful that some people who only care about optimizing their gameplay never use any other mount when going out into the world and doing world quests. The Azure Water Strider is earned from Angler Rep in Pandaria, and the Crimson from Nat Pagel in your Draenor Garrison. Angler Rep can be obtained very easily during Pandaria Time Walking Week, as you can just turn in time walking tokens for angler rep. 
Otherwise, you're just going to have to do dailies to farm out the rep for the mount. Whereas the Crimson Water Strider can be done with lots of grinding or fishing, or murloc raids, the same ones used to get the riding turtle. So unless you're a shaman or a death knight, who are the only two classes that have convenient water walking abilities, a water strider mount is almost a must have. And at number zero, as kind of a bonus spot, I thought I would bring this up even though it's not technically a mount. The angler's fishing raft is a toy that allows the user to water walk. It moves slowly at first, but if you spam the jump button over and over, it will increase in speed until it caps out at 250% movement speed, which is actually further modified by your normal on land running movement speed. So it can go even higher than that depending on what your speed stat is. With this toy item, you can actually go faster over water than you can on an epic ground mount with 100% increased speed, which is much faster than water striders. You can also fish while on this raft, which you can't do on mounts. There is also the similar item, Bepsi's Bobbing Bird from the Anglers as well, but it's mage only and has yet to be added to the toy collection, wasting a space in your bag. Alright, and that's it for the video. If you think there's any other mounts with special abilities I missed, I'd love to hear about them, as well as ideas for future videos just like this one down in the comments.